Hello photographers. Exposure compensation is a tool to help you take photos that look the way you want them to look, but it is sometimes a bit confusing. First as a concept, what exposure compensation even means isn't entirely clear. And second, how exposure compensation works changes based on how you're shooting. We can't talk about exposure compensation without first making sure everyone understands what exposure is. In photography, exposure is the amount of light you capture or expose the sensor to when you take a photo. We measure how much light is being captured for a photo with our exposure indicator, and when the exposure indicator reads zero, that's what the camera thinks is a correct exposure for the scene. Exposure compensation is the act of changing the exposure from what the camera thinks is correct to what you think is correct for the photo. For example, let's say you're photographing a snow scene and you get a zero reading with an ISO at 100, the aperture at f8, and the shutter speed at 1 500. When you take that photo, you're going to end up with a dingy gray looking snow scene. The snow is gray because of how the camera calculates the exposure in the scene. But you don't want gray snow because snow should be bright and white. To make the snow in the photo look the way you want it to look, the image needs to be brighter, which means you need to capture more light when you take the photo. In order to do that, you might change the shutter speed from 1 500th of a second to 1 125th of a second. From 1 500th of a second to 1 125th is a change of plus two stops. So now your exposure indicator would read plus two, and when you take the photo, your snow will be nice and white. What you've done here is compensated for the camera's ability to understand what you want the photo to look like. See, the camera is a stupid machine. If you want to know why, check out this video in the card right here. But what you need to know is that when it comes to evaluating a scene for exposure, the camera does not care how the photo should look to your mind. It only cares about making its exposure calculation work. So exposure compensation is simply changing the exposure to a value other than zero, and how you do this varies depending on how you're shooting. The easiest way is when shooting in manual mode, because in manual mode, exposure compensation is nothing more than you changing one or more of your ISO, aperture, or shutter speed settings. When you set your settings so that your exposure value is something other than zero, that's exposure compensation. Now there's also a button on your camera that looks like this, and that's the exposure compensation button. If you have a DSLR with just one control dial, like a Canon Rebel series or a Nikon D3000 or 5000 series camera, then you're already familiar with this button because it's the button that you use to change the aperture when shooting in manual mode. This is a multi-function button. On Nikon cameras, the aperture function is indicated by this little icon right here, and on Canon cameras, Cameras, it's marked with the letters AV, which stand for aperture value. So when in manual mode, this button lets you change your aperture. When shooting in program auto, aperture priority, or shutter priority modes, this button is your exposure compensation button. When in program auto or one of the priority modes, you're giving some control of your exposure settings back to the camera. In program auto, the camera controls the aperture and the shutter speed while you control the ISO. In aperture priority, you control the ISO and the aperture while the camera controls the shutter speed. And in shutter priority, you control the ISO and the shutter speed while the camera controls the aperture. In all of these modes, the default behavior of the camera is to set the setting or settings that it controls so that the exposure value of the photo will be zero. So when shooting in any of these modes, if you want your exposure value to be something other than zero, you have to tell the camera. Just changing the settings you control won't make any difference because the camera will just change the settings that it controls to balance the exposure back to zero. To tell the camera that you want to under or overexpose the image, you have to set the exposure compensation. You set exposure compensation by holding down the button and spinning a control dial. If you have a camera with two control dials, it's typically the rear dial, but you might have to test both dials. Whichever dial it is, when you spin it, you'll see the exposure indicator moving. All you have to do is put the exposure indicator where you want the exposure to be. If you're photographing snow, like in the earlier example, you might set it to plus two. And once you've set your exposure compensation, when you take a photo, the camera will set the settings that it controls so that the exposure value bounces out to where you set it. So in the case of the snow, if you set it to plus two, the camera will set the settings it controls 
so that the photos you take are overexposed by two stops. Now there is one very important thing that you need to know about exposure compensation and that is that it does not change back by itself. This means that you have to remember to set your exposure compensation back to zero when you are done shooting. If you don't, the next time you shoot in any of the priority modes, you'll be over or underexposing your photos and you might not want that. In manual mode, there's nothing to change back because you control everything, so you already know that when you start shooting in a new situation, you have to set your exposure before you take any photos. But there's one more thing about exposure compensation that you need to know about, and that's how it works with auto ISO. First of all, if you don't know what auto ISO is, it is exactly what it sounds like. If you have auto ISO on your camera, it lets you give control of the ISO setting to the camera. If you use it in aperture priority, mode, you control the aperture and the camera controls the ISO and the shutter speed. In shutter priority mode, you control the shutter speed and the camera controls the ISO and the aperture. And in program auto, you're basically shooting in full auto again as the camera controls the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. And if you use exposure compensation with auto ISO in any of those modes, the only difference is that the camera may change more than one setting to balance out the exposure to where you want it. But if you use auto ISO in manual mode, you control the aperture and the shutter speed, and the camera controls the ISO. This means you've essentially turned manual mode into shutter and aperture priority mode. And just like the other priority modes, when the camera controls the ISO in manual mode, it will automatically set it to balance the exposure out to zero. This means that if you're in manual mode and you're using auto ISO, you have two options for over or under exposing your images. The first option is to take the camera out of auto ISO and just set all of the settings yourself, taking it back to full manual mode. And this method will work on any camera with a manual mode. The second option is to use the exposure compensation function. This might not be available on all cameras with auto ISO, but many of the cameras that do offer auto ISO when shooting in manual mode also allow you to set the exposure compensation. And by doing so, you are able to tell the camera to set the ISO so that your exposure value is something other than zero. And this works just like in the other priority modes. So if you leave auto ISO on and you don't set your exposure compensation back to zero, the next time you pick up your camera, you'll end up over or underexposing images that you may not want over or underexposed. So that's how exposure compensation works. And it's something that pretty much every photographer uses, whether they know it or not. Like I said earlier, it's a great tool because it allows you to take photos that look the way you want them to look. And to help you do that, I've put together an exposure compensation cheat sheet that covers how it works in the different shooting modes and it includes some common scenarios where you might want to use exposure compensation. And you can get it all at this link right here. Now, if you have any questions about exposure compensation or photography in general, let me know down in the comments. And then do me a favor, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel? If you really like this video, pretty please share it with your friends. It really helps me and this channel when you share the video. So hit that share button and then do the most important thing because nothing else matters if you don't get out there and take some some damn photos. I'll see you guys on the live show and include some comments in there. Thank you for watching. Now I get loads of questions and they all boil down to one thing, which is how do I make my camera do what I want it to do? And here's the thing, your camera is like an instrument and you can't make music if you can't play your instrument. If you want to learn how to play your camera like the instrument it is, visit this link right here to check out my guide to shooting in manual mode video course.